I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this combination actually of a certification video practice exam for you CCNA and CCNP candidates, and also a refresher on OSPF networks built over Frame Relay. And you can see the topic of today's exam is OSPF adjacencies, BDRs, and Layer 2. So we're going to be looking at quite a bit here in today's practice exam, and it's an excellent refresher beyond the exam question. Uh, for your particular exam and the real world as well. I do want to mention one thing with the CCNA Mastermind webinar coming up in on-demand mode. We're launching a new site with all of our YouTube videos there as well. A little better organized than they are on YouTube, so it's easier for you to find exactly what you need. The reason that I'm mentioning that here as a prelude is that in my full-blown Mastermind webinar, I don't pre-configure anything. You know, you're seeing it all built step by step by step as we go through the material. And because of the time constraints uh, from YouTube, we're limited to 10 minutes here. And literally, we spend about 90 minutes in the webinar just going over OSPF NBMA networks. It's very detailed. But I'll show you as much as I can here in the few minutes we have in this video. And I have pre-configured it. So when we're answering the questions here, or the question that I'll have up in a moment, you'll see these things already configured and again that's just simply due to the YouTube time limits that we have. So let's take a look at this question and notice this is a very different exam for us. It's one single question but a lot of good information in it. You're configuring OSPF over frame relay just as I mentioned and we've got a typical hub and spoke router configuration where R1 is our hub router and actually I'll put in R3 there because we've got two spoke routers, R2 and R3. I've got six statements that I'm going to show you, and I've broken them up a little bit here on the screen, so feel free to pause the video here if you need to. But first off, will you need the broadcast option on the frame map statements for OSPF to work correctly? The second statement, since frame relay runs at L2 and OSPF runs at L3 of the OSI uh, layer, then, or the OSI model, the frame map statements don't matter. So it seemed that only one of those could be true. Should you use the IP OSPF priority 2 command in this configuration, or the IP OSPF priority 0 command in this configuration? Or neither, because in this exam and the exams we have on the webinar site as well, uh, I don't tell you how many choices are true. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't like them either, but uh, it's, it's like bad tasting medicine. It, it is good for us to take on questions like this. Finally, should there be no BDR when the config is finished? Or do all OSPF networks have a BDR? So I'll show those statements one more time. And again, if you need to, another minute or two to plan your answer or choose your answers, that's great. And in a moment, I'll bring up the router, the, uh, router pod with 1, 2, and 3 in it. It's already pre-configured and we will go through and take a look at these answers and see which ones are true. So let's start with these two. Will you need the broadcast option on the frame map statements or does it matter? You know, since frame relay runs at layer 2 and OSPF runs at layer 3. Before I bring up the pod and show you the answer there, I want to give it to you right now. It's A. You always have to have layer 2 working properly for layer 3 to ever work properly. So B cannot possibly be true. Remember, layer 3 protocols are actually dependent on layer 2 working correctly. You will need the broadcast option on the frame map statements because we need OSPF hellos to go out over these interfaces. And those hellos are multicast, and that is included with that broadcast option. If you leave the broadcast option off, uh, OSPF in this configuration would not work correctly. And I'll just show you one here. You're probably familiar with this, but it never hurts to take another look. There are the frame map statements that I have in this particular lab, and you can see that I did put the broadcast option on there. It's a legal command without it, and I'd be able to send pings around, but I would not, because pings are unicast, but I would not be able to have a working OSPF configuration without that. So are we using either one of these commands in this particular configuration? Yes, we are. We're going to use the IP OSPF priority zero command on the spoke router interfaces. And we started here on R1. I'll enlarge the window there a bit. Let's go to uh, router two. I'll do a quick show config. And you can see where I put that particular command on this router. It needs to go on the interface. 
because you want your hub to become the designated router, but you actually want to disqualify your spoke router interfaces from even participating in the DRBDR election in a hub and spoke network, an NBMA network. So that's what you need. It's not enough to go to the hub and raise the priority. The default priority is one, by the way. You need to go to the spoke routers and actually set that to zero. And I'll show you that I did the exact same thing here on router three, the other spoke. So there's IP OSPF priority zero. So again, you will not be using the priority two command. You'll be using the priority zero command. That's as low as we can set the priority on an interface. And again, that goes on your spokes. Now, th that ties into this one. You know, should there be a BDR when the config is finished? No. If there's one hub and two spokes, the hub needs to be the DR, the designated router, and then the spokes need to be what we call a DR other. And let me show you exactly what that looks like in show IP OSPF neighbor. And here, and I'll scroll over to show you that's just serial zero, that's the local interface through which the adjacency is formed. But here you can see that router three has one neighbor and it's the designated router, which is router 1 at 123.1. You will not have spoke-to-spoke -spoke adjacencies. But if you go to router 1 and run that exact same command, this is what you're going to see. Once the adjacencies are up, you're going to see those spoke routers seen as DR others, which means simply this is other than a DR or BDR because that's a rule of hub and spoke networks. You don't want there to be a BDR. There, is also, there are also, I should say, other OSPF network types that don't have a BDR. A point-to-point -point OSPF network, for example, is not going to have a DR or a BDR. That's actually covered in another one of my YouTube videos, and I'll make a practice exam for that shortly as well. But not all OSPF networks are going to have a BDR, and actually not all of them are going to have a DR. That concludes our look at OSPF here. Hope you enjoyed that question. Again, that's just a few of the details about an OSPF hub and spoke network. There are plenty of others. And again, in my full webinar, which I hope to see you at, we'll be spending quite a bit of time on that. Also hope to see you at at the blog, the bryantadvantage.blogspot.com. Plenty of free videos, free webinars, free tutorials, lots of great stuff to help you get Cisco certified. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.